This is the PlayStation Access Controller, a new accessibility-focused controller for the PS5. It's coming out later this year, and we just got our hands on it. The Access Controller is an incredibly customizable controller aimed at helping gamers with disabilities have a more comfortable experience. When you use the standard DualSense controller for the PlayStation 5, it has one orientation for use. Hands at the side with two planes of buttons, flat across the top and in the front. Unfortunately, many people can't use this controller this way due to factors like the buttons being too small or densely packed together. As such, players with impaired motor control often have to adapt themselves around the controller. The Access flips this by making the controller adapt to the player's needs, and if the gamer's needs change, it can continue to change too. Unlike the DualSense, it has no preferred orientation. You can position it in any direction you'd like and set the PS5 to read it appropriately. It features a joystick that can be swapped for several different cab types. It can also be slid and locked closer and further from the base. The base has eight standard inputs arranged in a circle and one large button in the middle. You can assign these to whatever controller input you'd like. Multiple buttons can also have the same function. For example, if you'd like the X input to show up in two separate places, players can even assign multiple functions to a single button, such as pairing L3 and R3 together, a common but somewhat awkward request in games that requires players to press in both the controller's analog sticks at the same time. These large white buttons magnetize into place and you can slot in labels to help you remember. Personally, I found the removal process a bit challenging, so I wouldn't be surprised if someone needed assistance when first setting this up. Toggle mode is a new function for the access controller. Often, racing games will require the player to hold down the R2 button to continually have their race car accelerate. Unfortunately, this constant hold can be challenging for some people. Toggle mode allows you to tap a button once, and the game will read it as a continual press, similar to holding down the shift key versus using caps lock on a keyboard. Now, when racing, the player has one less input to worry about and only has to focus on steering and using the brakes. Using the controller felt great, the buttons were secure and sturdy, and the number of different shapes was great to see. PlayStation mentioned that there will be a one to two week immersion period in order to get used to a new controller layout. Personally, I did have to kind of rewire my brain to remember where everything was in the short time I had with it. Along the side of the axis are four 3.5 millimeter inputs for attaching additional accessories. PlayStation is partnering with Logitech for a number of these, and we were shown some of the extra buttons, levers, and inputs you'd be able to connect. Underneath the controller is a rubberized base to help it stay in place when on a table or wheelchair tray, and three screw slots for tripod attachment. The Access controller can also be paired with multiple additional controllers, whether that be a second Access or a standard DualSense. This opens up further customization options depending on the gamer's needs. For example, the left hand can use a DualSense for character movement, while the right hand uses the Access to avoid the densely packed face buttons on the standard controller. Located just under the analog stick is the profile button. The access supports up to three profiles that it can toggle between just by pressing the button. This allows users to assign different layouts and orientations for different games. This was great to see because the same configuration doesn't always work for every situation. This ease of use extends to the package design that the controller comes in. The box is configured to allow you to open everything with one hand. Everything inside is laid out flat in front of you with nothing overlapping or hidden away. We were told the PlayStation Access controller has a battery life similar to the DualSense, which puts it around 7 to 9 hours. It's releasing on December 6th for $90 and is available for pre-order now. It's great that PlayStation is thinking about accessibility like this. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching.